Welcome to the check-in session and you know what we always say, back like we never left. And tonight I have a special guest for you, a wonderful man of God from the ends of the earth. That's what they say, but I'll let him confirm or deny that. My name is Laverne Rutivi and I'm your host tonight. Wherever you are, good morning, good afternoon, or good evening, depending on when you listen to this, when you watch into this. And you know what we always say? Don't speculate, participate. So grab a pen, grab a pad. I believe that the Lord has something reserved for you. And he's going to be speaking to you tonight in this very moment. So, my friends, allow me to introduce to you Pastor Dinwell Chingangu from Sulwezi Zambia. Pastor, I'm so glad to have you here on the check-in session. How are you? Well, I'm all right. Thank you. Um, Pastor Dinwell um, Chingangu from um, the real end of the world, like uh, Pastor Laven has just uh, said. And I'm glad to be here uh, with you. We welcome you all. Thank you. Thank you. So, Pastor, it's been a long time since we saw each other, since we connected. And um, tell me, what has been happening in that season where we were not meeting with each other, where we were not gathering together where we were not fellowshipping what has been going on in your part of the world and in your life and in your ministry uh well um you're right it's been a while since we um we uh, we met uh it's been a uh, a moment that has been uh, uh so um scary especially to um, go through a moment, you know, where suddenly you are told no more church. And then he, um, because obviously of um, uh, COVID-19, and then you are told no church, uh, you have church in your house, in your houses, and uh, then the numbers are reduced. And uh, then to see loved ones, most of them, or some of them, I must say, even men of God have fallen off. And completely, you know, they've just backslidden. Why? Because they couldn't just come through, uh, come to terms with what we were going through. But anyway, in that part of the of uh, the world, we continued trusting the Lord. And uh, although some of our people were affected directly by COVID, but I must say that by the grace of God, we never lost any. Until finally we saw a time when... Uh, um, restrictions eased up they said okay fine you can meet but only for one hour so really it has been a challenge coming from a background where you know as a pastor you were um geared and when you go to preach you you know it's three four hours and then reduced it to an hour and we have seen the hand of the lord you know through it all so what was uh the adjusting and how did you manage to recalibrate yourself from going to three hour long worship services to one hour worship services. What were some of the things that you had to um, reassess and look at how you had your worship services? You know, we had to, uh, obviously as a preacher, um, you you trim down on how many um, scriptures you are going to uh, quote as you bring forth your message. And uh, you just uh, get the, um, the nitty gritties of what you really want to talk about and make sure that within five minutes, it was a good training ground, although, for men of God. You just make sure that, you know, uh, the message that you deliver within the first five, ten minutes, you know, even if someone said the service is over, someone should be able to say, okay, this is the meat of what pastor was talking about. And I feel it has really uh, helped me personally to really look, really look at uh, the way we have services and then um, restructure you know, our worship and then also the preaching as well. And I think it has, it has, it has worked well in a way. What was the most memorable or unique uh, experience you had when the services were changed? that you remember throughout this season? Is there a particular Sunday service that something happened or you experienced something that you can say, wow, that was um, very key to building me? As you said, I've learned, I've used, this has become a way of learning. Is there something that you can say you took away 
from that time when there was a switchover. Yeah, something that I um, I learned was um, the Lord really, you know, helping me as a minister of the gospel, uh, not really to depend on offerings and tithes per se that God's people, you know, give. Because now you are looking at people who some of them have been laid off and they cannot go for work and the salaries have been reduced. And then you start now thinking as a man of God, how therefore do we forge ahead and take the work of God forward? So it, uh, in a way, and on a positive side, it helped me personally to start thinking and praying unto God, looking at something else that you know we can do, like Paul was a tent maker, to try and see how to, you know, take the, the work of God forward, uh, in in as far as uh, you know finances are concerned. And um, I ventured into agriculture, and we, so far we we through the grace of God we partnered with some brothers. And uh, then we did about 22 hectares of maize, which is drying up, of course, now waiting for harvest. Yes. So that's what they say you call church in the wilderness. Exactly. Church in the wilderness. And actually, on that note, in terms of um, finding alternative ways of sustaining the work of God, yeah. I will use that to ask my following question in that. How did you meet the needs of the people? As you had mentioned, you said some people were laid off from their places of work or their salaries were, were cut. How did you help um, alleviate maybe the burden, the financial burden of the people and the saints of God in, in the church? Well, um, like I said, uh, it, uh, it was quite a challenge because, you know, uh, like someone says, um, you know, he, we all learned some of these things or are learning them now where you know you live on you know a, a hand to mouth as it were now you find that from the little savings that we had we were able to help those that were really in dire need that needed help that would probably call on you as a man of god we helped them you know by giving them food buying them stuff to just you know uh, take them along uh, the you know the times the difficulty times yes and now coming out of that season as you've seen after come out of that season and now you can say like restrictions were lifted yeah. and people were uh, able to travel and, and whatnot tell me were you able to immediately make that trip to come to Nairobi or did it have to wait? And what was it in terms of preparation to uh, travel, to get back to traveling ministry? Yes. Um, I must say um, it is something that it wasn't easy to, it wasn't easy to, you know, um, just immediately uh, come back to the normal uh, way of doing ministry where you travel because uh, our call or our ministry, you know, is global. And therefore, uh, the normal way that we have done church is that uh, you travel as a minister of the gospel and uh, come over here in Nairobi and be part of the convention and see what God has for his people, you know, especially during and after Easter. So uh, traveling has been a challenge. Me personally, I had given up because I told the people, look, I'm not able to make it until probably after we harvest, like I said, and then we see what uh, we can do probably uh, in the next, um, in the near future. But it was just by the grace of God when the uh, command comes from your spiritual father and he says, hey, I want you here. And then, he, you know, you just have to make sure you, you wake around the clock to make sure you know you get back here. But traveling now has become a challenge. And, uh, you know, you need of course, to have the vaccination and you need to fill in the forms online, which is quite tricky. And if you don't understand the computer, you know, you give up. For example, when I got to the airport, I was told, well, you are the first customer in that, uh, to fill in the forms successfully. I almost gave up. But you find when you get now to the airport and um, everything is successfully done, and then you go through that, you find yourself here, you're like, wow, this is a different world altogether. Yes. 
even on that, I just have to just say we appreciate. We appreciate the sacrifice um, you've taken to come out here. And like you said, um, travel has changed quite a bit. It's, there's a lot of uh, administration, like you're saying, that you have to go through and a lot of hoops that one has to go through this test and that. Are you vaccinated? This and that. You know, all those things that one has to deal with. And now virtually, a lot of things have to be done virtually. Right. So I appreciate, we appreciate you for coming here and making your presence felt, you know, as a man of God said, make your presence felt, come and mark your re- mark the register and say, yes, Dean Well was here. So we're, we're so glad to, to have had you. Right. And um, I, I also wanted to ask you like now, coming out of that and now finally getting to Nairobi, what can you say uh, was different this time in your, uh, visit to Nairobi in your sojourning in in Nairobi so to speak yeah in your visit and even sojourning because you've been here throughout the convention which was a number of weeks ago and you've also had some time to minister locally in within Nairobi and the diff and some also outside of Nairobi within and without Nairobi so what can you say is the overall um takeaway from your trip here uh, my overall takeaway is that you see, uh, we coming from the theme that we have had this year, live again, coming from Ezekiel chapter number 37. You know, from verse 1, you're looking at a man of God called Ezekiel led into the valley of bones. And I must say that the past two years of uh, pre and post COVID were like we were in a valley of some sort and then you even pre-covid we were already in the valley so we were like you know it's a valley of dry bones and all ezekiel would say when he's asked a question can these bones live he did not beat about the bush he just said lord thou knowest so when i came over here you know you are looking at um, somebody that has come it's like you know where you are coming it's a it's a it's a it's a valley full of hopeless, hopelessness. And then coming here, really I would say this one was the mother of all conventions. Because now you find that when the word of God was spoken, when the, the man of God, Apostle Alois Rutivi, went in those areas of you know what the Lord has, had put upon his, his spirit, really it has brought revival. And I feel like, you know, going back home, you know, Zam- to Zambia, people are expectant and they are waiting. They need to be impacted. Really, they have now to be revived as well. There's been quite a revival. And then, you know, coming here, uh, Nairobi has always been a source of inspiration to me personally and to the people back home. Because you come here, then you find uh, the people in Nairobi were not just sitting back even during COVID times. You know, there are campuses that are born. You talk about the current campus. You talk about the uh, Earth River campus. And, you know, these are church buildings that are built and nice. And you talk about uh, Kasarani, uh, you know, campus. So all these put together, that has really left quite an impact upon me as a preacher of the gospel uh, personally to say, yes, it's possible if God can do it. Uh, for the people in Nairobi, we can also do the same in Zambia. So it's given us such an impetus, you know, to go back home there and work like never before. Yes. On that note, with that drive, um, I know I am, I'm yet to visit you in Solwezi, Zambia. Yeah. Yeah. But from what I remember you sharing in your testimony is that actually throughout the pandemic, God was able to use you to uh, extend the ministry out there and other ministries were started and, and works were started there, you know, exactly. with taking that spirit of Nairobi in terms of going and spreading out and, you know, preaching the anointed gospel globally. Yes. Can you maybe touch on some of that, that experience of how the ministry has grown out there? Yes. I've seen the Lord uh, moving with us. In that, you know, even after COVID, before COVID, actually, we we said, look, it can be done. Let's go out there. And uh, I had to release young men that have been raised and trained up by, you know, uh, uh, us in our ministry in 
uh, northwestern province in Soloezi. So I said, look, uh, you go. Because what I've come to learn personally is that, you see, every one of us, even the young people that we see, they've got influence. They are influential uh, in their own way. So uh, the Lord revealed to me after the apostle talked to me, he said, why don't you, because Soloezi is bigger than me, you know, uh, I thought that's what he told me. So release people. Let you start uh, uh, some, uh, you know, um, uh, cell groups somewhere else and allow people that have been working with you to go. So when we did that and I could see myself um, uh, working sometimes on a Sunday doing three services in a day. We start one at seven o'clock, end at eight, then go somewhere else, do another one from eight o'clock to nine o'clock. Then we go to another one, do another one from 9 o'clock to 10 hours. Then I go now, start another one, the main one at 10.30 to 12.30 hours. So we really have seen the Lord, uh, you know, moving and helping us go forward. And even if some of our people got affected by, the COVID, by COVID-19 itself, but I want to say here that we lost nobody. They got so sick, some of them to a point of... Uh, where people gave up and they were on oxygen, but we prayed to the Lord and the Lord saw us through. So w- that has helped us and uh, it has given uh, hope to God's people to say, yes, the Lord is on our side. And we have seen, you know, the fellowship go. We have been affected well, in a way, in that uh, numbers have reduced a little bit. You find where you used to have 400 people in one of our um, branches, but the numbers came down to 250. But of course, after now, we went and uh, encouraged them. You see, numbers are swelling again. So people are beginning to see that God is on our side. And if he was with us during that period, he definitely will be with us going forward. So what I said was, listen, uh, you young men, go out there and be of um, uh, help and and, uh, uh, have impact in the other young people. And we have seen a young generation, you know, we are seeing the young generation coming up and they are impacted because they say, wow, here is a ministry that is even allowing young men, you know, to be pastors. So it really has, you know, given hope to the young ones. And then you find the young ones actually are, are pastoring elderly people. So where they, they, they need help in terms of counseling and so forth, they still come back to, to, to us and say, Dad, what can I do here? And then we help them. What I see and when I hear that is that I, I hear the Lord's assignment where he said, go into all the world and preach the gospel to every creature. And, you know, they call it the Great Commission. Co-mission because it's co and a mission. There's a mission and the mission mm-hmm. is to preach the gospel. Co because we partner with God. I heard you say a key word yes. that made my ear tingle and you said the Lord helping us. Yes. You know, the Lord has helped us. The Lord has graced us to do to do that work. And um, that's very exciting. That's very exciting. And so, <clears throat> as you said, now in your returning back and the people excited to, to see what the next uh, level is, between when we meet again and now what can you say you are trusting god for to see um in your family one in your ministry two and in your city indeed it is uh, trusting god after coming here um i i've seen you know in two years within two years people trusting god and within two years god has given them a place that we can call their own where we can go and worship the lord and then, you know, us back home, we have uh, 6.1 acres of land. You know, back home, we, we count it in hectares, which means it's about two and a half hectares of land, which we bought from the government to build a church. Now, we've been postponing, thinking, well, thing, when things get better, that's when we start. But now, now we are, I'm going back to Solwezi saying we can start now. And then, you know, give God's people a place that they can call their own, uh, where they can go and worship the Lord. And then, you know, build something where children can have uh, a place to be called the is it babies in the nursery. And then, you know, Sunday school and things like that. Well, I've learned a lot during this period of going around and within and outside Nairobi. And really, that has given me that drive. 
And then we are trusting God that there's going to be quite a revival back home. Uh, you know, not only in Solwezi, but Zambia as a whole. And even spilling over in the DRC in Congo, because we've got uh, uh, brethren from Congo uh, who could not come because, you know, uh, of the restrictions, the travel restrictions. Because if you're coming by road, you know, it takes you three to four days to travel from Zambia to, to Nairobi. So they could not make it because by the time they get to the border, they are PRC tests you know, would have expired. You need another PCR test, you know, to be done. So as the, we go forward, we are trusting the Lord that these things will easen up. So we have now to go around, around those places, carrying that torch and the banner and showing them that, look, the Lord is on our side. And really, you know, just make sure that these people are raised up and together as a, you know, mighty army, we go forward, yes. I actually want to ask you, um, as we come to the close of this uh, conversation, you had shared a word, you had given us a scripture to the people of Nairobi. You had shared that in the service. And I was wondering if you would just touch on that again and maybe just expound on that, whereby you had taken us to the book of, was it Ezekiel? Ezekiel. The book of Ezekiel chapter Ezekiel. 18 from, yes, yes, yes. from verse 1 through 3. Yes, yes, yes. If you can expound on that, that word that the Lord had given you for us as you speak to the people yes, yes, and yes. just share that word that God had given you. I would like to uh, refer to um, uh, that scripture that Pastor Laverne has just uh, reminded me um, about and um, it is a word that the Lord uh, dropped uh, into my spirit as a way of saying goodbye to, uh, to Nairobi. Um, and um, uh, the, the, the scripture is in uh, Ezekiel chapter number 18, verse number 1. The Bible reads, and I'm reading, I'm reading from the NLT version. It says, Then another message came to me from the Lord. Why do you quote? This proverb, in the land of Israel, the parents have eaten sour grapes, that's the proverb, but the children's mouths or teeth are set on edge. They, you know, the children's mouths pucker at the test. Then the Lord said, as surely as I live. So in other words, you know, the Lord now is swearing by himself. By himself. The living God is swearing. He says, as long as I live. And I believe, you know, this word is for us. It's a word in due season. He says, as well, as long as I live, says the sovereign Lord, you will not say this proverb anymore in Israel. The King James Version says, you will have no occasion whatsoever to say our parents ate sour grapes, and then us as children's teeth, as our teeth are set on edge. I give an example. My mother is back home in Zambia, Chile La Bombe, at the uh, border with the DRC. And uh, what the Israelites are saying here is that my mother who's back home in Zambia can eat sour grapes. And me who is here in Nairobi, I feel the effects of eating my mother eating sour grapes. Now there is no connection, obviously. And we see how... Uh, Apostle came in, Bishop came in and expounded that, you know, he said uh, in the past, what used to happen is uh, when a parent sins that sin would spill over and affect the children that did not actually commit the sin and uh, to the fourth or seventh generation, can you imagine that? Now, these children were basically innocent in the sight of the Lord. Now the Lord tells Ezekiel, he says from today going forward you have no occasion whatsoever so what i see is the lord telling the fellowship now to say starting from now it starts now it's a now message none of us will say i'm failing because dad failed none of us should say i can't travel because my mother has never traveled none of us will say well uh, i couldn't complete school because you know this is actually what goes on in our family we should not be curse conscious as God's people. We should now be, you know, uh, uh, people that realize that Jesus, when he came, 
Galatians chapter 3 verse 13 says, you know, the scripture says, Cursed be a man, every man that, that hangs on the tree. So Jesus became a curse for us so that we that were cursed can be blessed. So this generation from starting now, from the mother of uh, uh, conventions, you know, it's unfortunate that well, some people for one reason and the other, they missed this. But you see, from this mother of convention going forward, God says, he had sworn to himself, he says, there is no occasion whatsoever where we should use this proverb to say, I can't do it because dad didn't do it. Actually here, from here, I want to say what my father never achieved or what my father achieved only when he was 50, I want to achieve it when I'm 30 or even when I'm 20 because the word of God tells us so. I really feel this is a word for the moment and the Lord is just taking us to another level. Wow. Yes, sir. Wow. Thank you so much. Thank you so much for yes, that sir. for that word, for releasing that word that God had impressed on your heart. And um, we're so, so appreciative of you blessing us with your gift um, here in Nairobi campus and as well as in the other um, partnering campuses as well. We're so, so delighted for that. And we thank God for your gift. May you go back in peace. May you go back and may it be well with you. May that harvest that you, you're expecting to get a return from be a double, double, double portion in Jesus' name. Everything that you have sowed, may you reap twice more in the name of Jesus. And um, as we come to the close of this uh, discussion, I was wondering if you perhaps could just look directly into one of the cameras over there and maybe just pray, 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 say something, pray something over those of us who are joining us live there. Maybe they have something that you have that you can share with them and we can close with a word of prayer. Thank you for joining us, uh, wherever you are uh, joining us from. We want to say this word is not for tomorrow, it's not for yesterday, it's not for the, for the you know, past, it's for the now. It's in the now moment. And uh, the word is that, uh, you know, this proverb ceases now. It stops now. And it's not my uncle, it's not your uncle, it's not your mom who is saying this, but the Lord of hosts himself. He says, this proverb, stop it. Don't ever associate yourself with the past mistakes of our parents because the Lord says it's over. Now Jesus has come. Jesus, I would say, I'm not a soccer fan, but you know, Jesus is that Ball game, is a ball game changer. Jesus is that perfect super sub who is kept at the bench until the very moment when things are not going well on the football pitch there. When Jesus comes on the scene, things turn around. He's a story changer. So Jesus is here and now to change the story of you that is watching us, uh, you know, that has joined in eventually. So I would just like to pray uh, with you, you know, scripture that we, 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 we quoted again in church was Isaiah 40, which says, speak unto uh, Israel, speak comfortably or comfortingly, you know, uh, and, and that word is repeated more than twice, which means the Lord is here bringing this word to comfort you in whichever situation you are, in whatever condition you are. Are you sick? Are you need, not feeling well? This word is here to bring comfort to your condition. So shall we just pray. Father, we thank you in the mighty name of Jesus. We feel so privileged, Heavenly Father, to be called your children. And my God, because we are born not by the will of the flesh nor the man, but by the will of the Lord, by the Spirit of the Lord, and Lord, you told us that whatever we shall bind on earth shall be bound in heaven. Whatever we shall loose on earth shall be loosed in heaven. Right now, Lord, whatever we inherited unknowingly, Lord, from our parents or because of what people said, Lord, today we thank you because you are changing the story. And someone, Lord, watching us virtually right now that may be in pain, that may be on the sick bed. We command them to arise, rise up, be healed in the name of Jesus. 
be healed right now and rise up to the glory of the Lord. Father, we thank you for what you have done. We thank you for what you did on Calvary, Lord Jesus, that today us that were cursed are now called the blessed of the Lord. May your name be glorified. May your name be honored. Touch that soul, Lord, that is wondering and calling upon you as a savior. Your word tells us that there is only one name given upon which when men call, they shall be saved, the name Jesus. We thank you, Father, for what you have done. We give you all the glory, praise, and honor. In Jesus' mighty name we pray with thanksgiving in our hearts. Amen. Well, friends, thank you so much for joining us on this check-in session. Pastor Dimo, thank you so much, sir. May the Lord bless you. Go back, journey mercies. We look forward to seeing you again. And in due time, we will be coming in Zambia in the name of the Lord to do a wonderful thing. And to those of you who have been tuning in online, participating, I hope you wrote notes. I hope you wrote those scriptures down because God is speaking to you now, right now in this situation. So receive that word, receive that word. The Lord promised and he said to Abraham that in your seed shall all be blessed. And that seed is Jesus. And if you receive that seed, Jesus, then you too are blessed just as pastor said. So good morning, good afternoon, Good night, depending on where you are. We love you from House of Transformation. See you.